Hello everyone. Well, there's not anyone here yet. Uh, <laughs> uh, I wanted to start at five because I thought it might be quite atmospheric if you can catch the sound outside. Um, I live in uh, Tokyo and at five o'clock they have these different sounds in the different areas. Um, for the five o'clock noise, which I think is the sort of notice for home time, which is very nice. Um, this is just going to be like a little introduction to the show. Um, I wanted to introduce the name and the main image, which isn't this. I'll show you the main image in a minute. Uh, I was supposed to have this exhibition a year ago. I went back to England last March, um, which wasn't the ideal time. And I had this exhibition in July of last year. And what happened is I ended up staying in England till July, which was the first chance I got to come back here. It's been 18 months that this exhibition was in my mind. And obviously an enormous amount of things have happened since then. And I wanted to have a show after that 18 months that we've all been through that was just a kind of release of all of the things I wanted to paint, all of the paintings that I wanted to see, and really just enjoy myself after quite a stressful time. Um, the name of the exhibition came from a discussion that I was having with my other half and he's Japanese and he suggested that rather than having an English word for the name I use a kanji which is a Chinese character. In Japanese there are three alphabets, two phonetic ones and one Chinese character alphabet uh, which is pictograms and I really like the idea of having an exhibition title where you have an image um, that sums up the feeling that you want to convey as opposed to a word so we were talking about what kanji would work. A lot of my paintings are bilaterally symmetrical. So a lot of the Chinese characters, a lot of the kanji that I like are also bilaterally symmetrical. And one of my favorites is the kanji for happiness, sachi, shiowase. And if you look at the main image for my exhibition, the character is in the clouds. I really like the image of it. For me, it sort of looks like a big open heart, um, maybe like a figure opening or a tree of life with branches at the top and roots at the bottom. And I just thought it was a beautiful idea. It's a word, but it's an idea in a picture. So I chose that to be the title for this exhibition. And the main cover image has two origins. For me, what was really important about doing this exhibition was telling stories. Stories take a long time to explain, and I think there's something that's missing in the modern world a lot with social media. Uh, the idea of social media, what seems to be most catching, is getting an idea across very quickly and immediately. And there isn't a lot of room for telling a longer story. So I wanted my paintings to have their own stories. And I wanted the whole exhibition in its entirety to tell a story. So the main image that I used was from a story that I was told when I was little. Both of my parents used to tell me stories from books like C.S. Lewis and the Tolkien books and lots of different ones but my dad also very regularly told me a story from his imagination about a girl called Ping who was my proxy and Ping was an English girl her family moved into the Himalayan mountains into a very old house and while they were cleaning up the house to live in she found a map in the attic and decided to go on a quest so she saddled up her horse Pong and Ping and Pong, I, I know this sound, the name, mm. anyway, <laughs> the two of them 
went on this journey and every night it was a different story. They would meet a different um, magical being, whether they were a friend or a foe. And every night was a different story and this quest would continue on. And I love the idea of just this girl and her horse. Very recently, I had a dream about a horse that I was walking with and we communicated without words. And I think it might have been my imagination, but when I woke up, I felt very strongly that this was connected to the idea that Freud proposed of the ego and the id, where the ego is like a rider and the id is like a horse. And it's your intuition, it's your subconscious, it's your emotional raw side, your instincts. and. I like the idea that perhaps the meaning of this dream was that I was in better communication with those sides of myself. So I wanted to paint this painting of a girl with her horse going on a journey together, and that was going to be the main image for my show. So when you look at all of the advertising and pictures and images for the exhibition, it's that painting of this journey or this starting point of this journey with this girl and her horse. I haven't put the girl and the horse in yet so that's going to be the final thing that when you come and see the exhibition or I do, do the walkthrough you can finally see them in there. Um, I want to do a couple of videos introducing different stories from the different paintings as I go along. Um, all of the landscapes that I do are going to be encapsulated in one world which I'm painting um, but for now I'm gonna leave that one story there that first one of pink I love these stories by the way as well because my dad would incorporate things from life and he would tell me that Ping had met this person on the journey who'd given her this brooch of a magical boat which she had to find and then the next day my dad would give me this little enamel brooch and it just meant this story came alive and because he was telling it because he was making it up he could incorporate whatever he found or came across into the story to make it a living thing which is sort of what I want to do with this exhibition as well I'm going to tell stories with my pictures but I want people to see if they can find stories in as well and ideally if people talk about the paintings or share them um, if we're going to use social media, I love the idea of people telling their own story of the paintings when they post them, if you can, if you will, if you want. So I'm going to leave it there, except to say I'll be posting a couple more of these. The exhibition starts on the 2nd of July and finishes on the 24th of July. I will be doing live videos. If you want to purchase any artwork, you can go to the Courtyard website, which is cy-hiroo.jp. Um, and you can contact me if you have any questions, if you comment on here. Uh, I'd love to hear um, what your ideas about stories are at the moment. I think one of the really interesting things for me recently has been, I've been reading a lot of Carl Jung and his ideas about stories and the characters within stories representing different parts of the psyche. And I think this is the same with dreams. I had a really bizarre experience. I got up very early this morning because I had a horrible dream where a friend of mine died. I won't say her name in case she freaks out. Um, but she died and I was absolutely devastated and I was crying and I was crying and I was crying. And I woke up at 6 a.m. and I came in and I told my boss about it and she said, dreams about friends are very interesting and dreams about friends dying doesn't mean your friend's gonna die or anything but she told me one interpretation is it's a habit that you're letting go of and allowing to die and I had very recently had a conversation with another friend of mine who has a bad habit <laughs> and I said to him I love you, I love these conversations, this is great fun, but I can't hear about this side of your life because it's, it's something I don't want to know about you necessarily. <laughs> and I thought that would be an incredibly interesting thing if what that meant was my dream was 
allowing me to play out the death of this vicarious living out of someone else's habit. Um, I'd really like to know as well if anyone else has been having particularly strange dreams during the coronavirus. I remember particularly at the beginning, lots of people having dreams about people from their long and distant past and history. And my theory about this was that if we're all in a lockdown, if we can't meet new people, then it sort of makes sense to problem solve with old, you know, familiar characters. So, you know, you might not be meeting your new friend, Joe Bloggs, but that person who's imprinted on your mind from your early childhood fills that role, like in a story, for you, for whatever you're dealing with. So if I'm dealing with wanting to expiate negative habits from my psyche, I don't dream about, you know, that person telling me that story. I dream about my old friend dying. <laughs> I'd like to think there's a good psychological reason I'm tormented like this in my dreams. So I would also be very glad to hear that other people are having similar experiences. Comment, tell me about it. I will get back to you and be very interested. It's also a big part of what I'm going to be painting is these dreams. Several of them I can still remember from probably age four or five and some of them are stories and some of them are images this is from a dream that i had when i was about four or five years old and i will tell you more about the other ones as they come up um thank you to everyone who is here uh, hopefully i'll see you again and please join me for the show when it comes up <laughs>